It's me, Uncle John John, here to tell you a story, and it is the last story from Aunt Fanny's bedtime stories. We're at the end, and I, I don't really know what the stories were in this nursery picture book, but it is a cool cover. We, we met, we met the, uh, the frog. Uh, we haven't met the the golden goose. We, we sort of met the golden goose. We met the yeah, I think we did. We met the golden goose because they were uh, no no, it's the frogs. The frogs were running away from the no, it's the ducks. Yeah, it's the ducks running away from the the sky that's on fire. Yeah, and then there was the frogs. That the frogs were something else. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't keep I can't keep uh, my bedtime stories uh, straight. That's okay because we have one more bedtime story to tell from this book, or at least the pictures from this book. And then next time I'm going to use a, a different book. Yeah, okay. So, what is the story that we're going to hear this time? Wow. Okay. So, last last week, last episode, we we uh, talked about the cat. And at the dance contest, and at the end of the story, she, or he, or the cat, um, went to the uh, dance contest and was the winner of the dance contest, and then met a cool old lady. So, uh, what happened at the end of that story is this cat uh, grew up and became a lady and can wear a person clothes because it's a person cat. And now, in, in now we know that she is going to talk to this dog, and this dog seems like uh like my dog. My dog is a really friendly dog, and this dog seems really really friendly. They seem to be friends. Dogs and cats, you know, they can be they can be uh, friends, you know. And I think all dogs and cats and different kinds of animals and everything they should be friends. Now, now I I thought that. The cat, the person cat in the dance contest, was uh, a boy. But that is a boy. But but maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was a girl. And you know, it really doesn't matter. What really matters is uh, who is the cat, right? Who is the cat? And and in this picture, we know that the cat wants to wants to wear very pretty clothes. And, and be very formal, like like they're going to a ball or to a, a very important party where there'll be lots of really interesting people. And she's talking to the dog. Maybe maybe she's telling the dog about where she's going and, and what she hopes hopes to see and do and, and who she hopes to talk to. Uh, at this uh, at this place, so um, yeah, and, and the dog is like really really cool. The dog says, "Okay, yeah, that is going to be just fine." But the dog is like, "Ah, oh, yeah, but you know, this is my story now. You had your story last time. Now I'm gonna tell my story. Remember, remember last time I told you it was Catterday, Catterday, and then there was a dog, and the dog was thinking, <laughs> wait a minute, what about?" What about sadder dog, right? If you remember, yeah, see, there's, there's, uh, there's uh, the dog picture that I showed you. Uh, sadder dog, there's sadder dog, and the cat said, nope, it's cat or day, cat or day. But that was last, that was last week. And now we're going to tell the story about the dog. And the dog's going to say, well, it's my, it's my story. So today is sadder dog. And that is why the dog then decides that, that, um, uh, decides, well, he's going to tell a story about a duck or a turkey. Maybe it's a turkey. A duck, I think it's a duck, because because in this story, from, so this is a story from the dog's point of view. Because he gets to tell his story, come on. 
and he says, okay, um, this is a story about a duck on a farm. And, uh, that on this farm, uh, there were a lot of other birds. There's the turkey, and then there is the ducklings, and there's chickens. There's, there's goose. No, the plural of goose is geese. And the plural of turkey is turkeys. The plural of turkey is, um, and there, and there's a, there's a family. It's a farm. It's a farm, and there's a family uh, feeding the, the the goose and the chickens, and they're throwing seeds, and everybody's getting food. But but we see in this picture that this duck it has these little ducklings. Maybe this is a mama mama duck who's talking to turkey and getting getting some advice, right? Um, and then and then the duck uh, goes into the hen house with the other ducklings. Um, and there is a hen or a rooster. No, I think it's a rooster, right? There's a rooster in the hen house. And the rooster says, hey, duck, what are you, what are you doing here, dog? They're not supposed to be here. Like, this is like for the chickens. This is chicken's house. Ducks don't belong in a chicken's house, dog. And there's a cat there too. And the cat, the, but not the same cat. It's a different, it's a farm cat. This time there's a, farm cat and the farm cat is just chilling and is watching this exchange between this hen or rooster oh yeah i think it's a rooster and this this duck and uh and the uh, and the rooster says okay duck you need to you need to get out of here and he also says to the cat yeah you need to get out of here too foo you, can, you don't belong here i don't know why i don't know why the rooster talks like that but that's how he that's how he talks so the duck uh goes away and then goes um uh goes uh, uh runs away is what he does he, his feelings are hurt his feelings are hurt and so he runs away he runs away and goes to a pond where there's other ducks and there's other geese. Uh, and uh, actually, I'm not really sure that this is a duck because don't ducks have short necks? And goose has a long neck and and we can see in this picture that this that this has a this this uh person animal this person animal has a really long neck and how do we know is because um this this uh, duck i'm just gonna say for the purpose of the story this duck this 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 duck um uh, is sad and is kind of being kind of mopey on, in this pond and there's this really kind young man who sees him and, and walks over to the edge of the pond, the shore of the pond, and says, Hey, buddy, do you want a hug? And we know he's a kind young man because he's young and he wears kind of a little bit like uh, folk clothes, like like country clothes, but not like, like a farmer, a little bit you know different than our farmers clothes and also he has a chin strap and and any and anybody a boy or girl who has a chin strap is uh is very kind i, I think i think i think they are um and and he says ah oh, and he gives and he gives this duck a hug and now okay so here's my point here's my point why do i think this is actually a goose is because to give a give this person animal a hug it needs to have a shoulders and in a long neck and that's what we see in this picture when this kind young man with the chin strap is, i think maybe he's uh, amish 
or from uh, Ohio, one of those two places. And um, that's why I kind of think it's a it's a it's a goose. Uh, I'm a little I'm a little confused on on this point, but but it, it, this is this is an exciting story regardless. But I hope not too exciting. I hope not too exciting. I hope I hope that you're feeling very sleepy. I hope your eyes are getting really heavy while I'm telling you this story. While while you, this this uh, duck or goose is is floating on this pond, and this contact man is saying really nice, uh, calming things to to uh, the, to this uh, person animal. And, uh, and the duck says, oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I, I do feel a lot better. And I hope you feel, I hope you feel good too. I hope you feel like if you can uh, get ready to sleep. And I hope your mom and your dad are there with you, helping you uh, get to sleep, right? T telling you, okay, it's time for you to, to close your eyes now. I, I hope that's what they are telling you, it's time to close your eyes. Okay, so let's continue uh, with this uh, truly fascinating story about this duck that had its feelings hurt on the farm. And so he goes to, uh, he's kind of swimming around this, this pond, uh, and suddenly he sees other, other birds that are clearly uh, geese, right? Clearly geese, uh, 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 fly, flying around. Uh, and he goes, Whoa, wait a minute, I wasn't a duck all along. I, I guess I was a, a goose. And you know what? And you know what? I kind of feel like this this duck. If he really wanted to be a duck, he can be a, he can be a duck. Okay? Because if you truly feel you, you are you are that species, then, then okay, you're you're that species. But you have to be honest about it. You have to be honest. You can't uh, lie about it because you think, oh, it's gonna be so cool. And you can't uh, say that you're another species uh, just because you want to be. You want to be that other species. Right? I can't just go around and say, oh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a space alien and I can't do that. That's not really a good idea because I'm not being honest with myself. I'm not a space alien. I'm not. I'm not a space alien. I'm not. I, I would like to meet a space alien someday. And and if, and if I ever meet space aliens and they say, hey, we're part of this really cool club. I don't know what kind of cool club, but let's just say a really cool club. And they say, would you like to join us in this cool club? And I, and if it seems really cool and I like it, then I'll say, I want to be, I want to be a part of your cool club. And they said, well, if you want to join our cool club, then you have to feel like you are a member. That's the only way. And if I feel, oh, that's true. I feel like I am a member, then then there you are, you're a member of that aliens club. But you can't be an alien. No. But but some people, some people, uh, they really, really, really know. They know that they are different than what other people say they are. Right? So a lot of people I don't know what people are saying to this duck. Maybe a lot of people said to this duck, "Well, you're a you're a duck. You're kind of a weird looking duck, but you're a duck." And so, this this duck decided, "Okay, well, you know what? I I think I'm a duck." And then there you go, he's a duck. And then someone said, "Wait a minute, you're not a duck. You're a goose. You're really a goose." And and then the duck did his homework. He did his homework and. He learned that, well, um, person animals like him are not ducks. Person animals like him are not ducks. They are a goose. They're a goose. So in, in this way, he is a goose, but he doesn't think he's a goose. 
Okay, no, he goes, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I, I get it, I get it. In, in all of my homework, it says I am a goose, but I don't feel like a goose, I feel like a duck. I do duck things, I like doing duck things. I feel comfortable doing duck things. I don't feel good doing goose things. So, so if he says that, that he is a duck, then you know what Uncle John John says? He's a duck. And I don't care what anybody else says. He's a duck. But in this story, though, this, this person animal in this story that I'm telling you right now, this person story, he, he realizes that all this time he thought he was a duck growing up on that weirdo farm where everybody is kind of weird and, and kind of says, talks funny and everything. And he's in this pond and he sees other, other animals like him, just like him flying around saying, goose, 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 goose. And he says, wait a minute. Yeah, and that's what they are. They're, they're, they are all goose. And you know what? That's exactly what I am. I am a goose. I didn't know that. And I just found out and it feels right. It feels like a good thing for me to be a goose. But I think, I think, you know, he has to be happy. And now I think he's happy. Also, he's made a new friend, a human friend with a chin strap. And that's okay. You know what? We can like people with chin straps. Not all, not all people with chin straps, but I happen to know people with chin straps who are very kind and they are very nice. And it's okay to like those. It's not okay to like people with chin straps who are not cool and who are not nice and who are not very friendly. So stay away from them. Um, and I'm, so I think, you know, the goose, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a little stuck on this goose situation. So I went, I did a little research and I found out that there's actually uh, uh, out there in the in the world there's a goose festival. Believe it or not, there's a goose festival. It's called the Wild Goose Festival. And so let me tell you a little bit about the Wild Goose Festival. Um, the Wild Goose Festival is an art, music, and story-driven transformational experience. It's not it's not a concert or music festival. It's a, it's an experience. I don't, I don't understand either, but it sounds interesting. Um, and, and it's, it is grounded in faith inspired social justice. So I'm just, uh, I'm just reading from the internet. It says it encourages co-creation of music, story, theater, and spectacle spectacle oh so they have everyone wears glasses okay that's great an engagement also lots of people getting married you know in a wide variety of robust respectful conversations respectful i like that i'm a little nervous about the the religious the faith-based uh, part of this festival um i i have been to i have been to faith-based music festivals before they didn't seem very, very um, uh, 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 robust or res respectful in, in my experience. But uh, I haven't been to every single one. I haven't been to every single one. So the Wild Goose Festival. Uh, Wild Goose Festival. I thought this was a festival by and for geese. And I was wrong. It's for people persons. It's for per people persons. It says the wild, the internet says the wild goose is welcoming and hospitable, right? Hospitable. So if you're, you're sick, they can help you feel, make you feel better to people of all faiths or, or no faith, um, who join in seeking a common good. So I, I, I think, I, I think maybe the, the people who, who made this festival uh, might be a little bit uh, confused, uh, just like I'm, 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 I'm sort of confused, actually. Uh, but, but any, anyway, somewhere out there is, is a festival for, for geese, but not for the, the goose in our story, or I'm sorry, duck. 
Well, he's a goose. Uh, apparently, he's realized he's a he's a goose. But we're gonna just again for the purpose of a story, we're gonna call him a duck. We're gonna call him a duck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, he can't go to this festival because it's for people, persons, and it's kind of like full of weirdos. And um, it, which is okay, you know. It I pay. Hey, that is a that is a good thing. Uh, for weirdos, if you want to go to a weirdo festival, but that's not this this goose. Duck, I'm sorry, duck. Um, if he wants to go to a duck festival uh, or a goose festival, sure. If if there are such a thing, then they can't go. They can't go here. But I started thinking. Well, um, are there are there are there are there weirdo ducks? But actually, there there are there are weirdo ducks, and, and the one duck that I that I think of is is a duck that I I grew up. With I grew up with this duck, and his name is Daffy Duck. And Daffy Duck, oh, he's had many friends, and he's had many adventures. And usually, usually, he's very uh, annoyed all the time. He's always annoyed by things, but not all the time. Sometimes he's he's very happy, but sometimes his friends make him feel very annoyed by things. And do, do your friends make you feel annoyed? Mm, well, yeah. But if you, if your friends make you feel annoyed, well, that's that's how Daffy Duck feels. But hopefully you don't feel annoyed right now. Hopefully you don't feel annoyed. So hopefully you feel very tired, and you're ready to sleep. Are you already asleep? Maybe you're all right. Maybe you fell asleep when I was talking about the Wild Goose Festival, and and maybe maybe you're just about to sleep, just about to sleep while I'm talking about Daffy Duck and. Who is Daffy Duck? Well, um, I can't really tell you anymore, and actually I'm going to change the topic because I don't have the copyright uh, to this particular uh, person animal. So I'm going to move on. Um, so that got me thinking about other Daffy things, and that started, I don't know why I thought this, but I started thinking about um, Daffy Taffy. So I looked up Daffy Taffy and I found there is such a thing as Daffy Taffy. So let me teach you a little bit about Daffy Taffy. So there is a play, it's a famous play called Trilby. And one of the characters in Trilby is a character named Taffy. And one of his nicknames is Daffy Taffy. And in this picture, you see it's a very old picture because it has no copyright. It's in the public domain. In the public domain means Uncle John John can keep telling, him, keep telling his stories. And in this, uh, in this, pu uh, this picture, uh, there is a man. He's kind of a weird looking man. He's wearing kind of, kind of, grubby farmer clothes but under his grubby farmer clothes he's kind of wearing a button-down suit he's wearing a nice button-down shirt nice slacks nice dress shoes but over he's wearing and he's got his hair is kind of weird like his like it's like something's on his head and his beard is very exaggerated and yeah and it turns out that's a costume because because uh uh taffy is kind of a earthy, kind of mellow, forest-like uh, character in this play called Trilby. In the picture is a picture of the actor, the actor who performed in this play. And it turns out this actor is kind of an important person in American movies, in the beginnings of American movies. And this actor's name, his name is William Burr Macintosh. Everybody just called him Burr Macintosh. So Burr Macintosh, uh, just just very simply, very quickly, he, he was a photographer. He was a stage actor. For a very short time, he was a, a silent film actor, but but mostly he's known as being kind of a, a, an entrepreneur and an inventor and one of the first people to really uh, encourage and promote 
using radio and movies uh, to tell a story. So the reason why movies are the way they are and why radio dramas are the way that they were back in the old days is because of Burr McIntosh. He used his, his stage and theater background in a just very business-like mind to really push and, and really give shape to uh, modern American media that we know today. So he started as, as on a stage before there were films, and then when the silent movies started being made and radio started becoming more more available, he jumped right in right at the very beginning. He really started influencing uh, what what we can do with it if we want to tell our stories. And that is why we should all say thank you to Burr McIntosh, Daffy Taffy, ha ha ha, for for the the way I get to tell you my bedtime stories. So so Uncle John John, he says thank you to Burr McIntosh. So if you're asleep, which I hope you are, maybe your mom and your dad are listening to this, and I hope your mom and your dad are falling asleep while I tell the story of, of Burr McIntosh, but actually I, I'm not, I'm running out of tape. And because I'm running out of tape, that means it's the end of the story. And that means it's time for me to say to you, good night, good night.